Canis Everdeen and Peter Malark become targets of the capital after their victory in the 74th Hunger Games sparks a rebellion in the districts of Panem. This is my review of The Hunger Games Catching Fire. So if you've seen my first review um, for the Hunger Games movie, then you guys know that I thought that um, the first movie was good, it, even though it had its problems, but I still thought it was good overall. But um, when I heard that um, Catching Fire was getting a new director and a new set of writers, I was like, okay. And when I heard who those people were, I was like um, getting excited because I've seen those people's work, and I'll talk about who those people are in a second. But guys, Hunger Games Catching Fire is an incredible movie. It is so superior than the first one. You guys need to see it right now. The good points. So like I said, I thought that this film was way superior than the first movie. Like on, on many ways, on many um, levels. Like with the, um, the directing, the writing, the acting, the cinematography, the visual effects, the costume design, the production design, the editing, the pacing, I thought it was just incredible. So the film is directed by Francis Lawrence, who has no relation to Jennifer Lawrence. But anyways, um, Francis Lawrence has directed films like Water for Elephants, which I've never seen. But I've seen um, Constantine and I Am Legend, which he directed, and I thought those films were good. The film is written by Michael Arndt, who wrote Loma Sunshine and Toy Story 3, which I both liked. And it's being co-written as well with um, Simon Beefroy, who wrote uh, The Full Monty, Slumdog Millionaire, and 127 Hours, which I like those films as well. I thought that the writers did a good job of adapting the, the book onto screen, because there's a lot of stuff to cover in the book. Um, yeah, like the first two thirds of the book are about Candace's um, actions, like the aftermath of her actions, and like her trying to save her loved ones and everything. And the last third of it is about the um, the next Hunger Games and everything. And I thought that the way um, they wrote it was good because um, it, like I was trying to imagine it through the eyes of someone who's never read the books, and I thought that they did a really good job of writing it because. Um, they explain um, the things that they need to explain and they um, show more character development for the characters that we already know and for characters that are new to us. And I thought that um, Francis Lawrence, like I said, did a good job, but he, I, he did a better job than Gary Ross. I mean, where was Francis Lawrence for the first movie? Because um, I think um, Francis Lawrence, with his directing, along with the writing, um, brought the movie on a um, grander scale and the reason I think that is because in the first movie um, the movie was on a smaller scale in my opinion because it was really all about the games really but in Catching Fire it's more about the politics of Panem and it's more about the uh, the abuse of the districts of Panem and it's more about like this rebellion that's that's um, starting or that's trying to start and it, just because of those elements, it was brought onto a grander scale. And I thought that the um, the way the movie was directed was really good as well because there are some really good visuals and there are some really good action scenes. I mean, there's some, just one scene of shaky cam from what I remember, but overall I thought the action scenes were really good. Um, way better than um, the first movie. As for the acting, um, Jennifer Lawrence still does a good job as Katniss. Uh, Josh Hutcherson as PETA. Um, like he brought his acting levels up in this movie and if it felt like um Peta was a more important character in this movie Liam Hemsworth as Gail was um his acting was still the same from the first movie like nothing really special Woody Harrelson as Hamish was good Elizabeth Banks as Effie was good uh Donald Sutherland as President Snow was really good I mean he was just menacing in this movie Stanley Tucci as Caesar Flickerman was good um, even Lenny Kravitz as Cena was still good. As for the new people coming in to the um, film franchise, uh, Sam Claflin, who's from movies like uh, Pirates of the Caribbean on Stranger Tides and Snow White and the Huntsman, which 
I didn't really care for his movies or his acting. But in Sam, Cl but in, um, yeah, Sam Claflin showed his acting chops in Catching Fire. I mean, I thought um, this was his best role that he's ever done. Jenna Malone as um, Johanna was really good as well because I thought that she brought the character alive. I thought that she did a really good job of like reenacting the character and everything. And the final thing I will say is um, about Jeffrey Wright who plays Beatty. I thought um, I thought he did a good job as Beatty. I mean, there are some things that may have changed, but overall he did a good job as Beatty. Oh, and I almost forgot. There's um, Philip Seymour Hoffman as um, Plutarch Heavensby, who is the new um, gameskeeper for the next Hunger Games. I mean, for this Hunger Games. And um, he he did a really good job. Even though he wasn't really in the movie that much, I thought he did a, um, a great job with his um, role as Plutarch. The final thing I'll say about uh, Catching Fire, the good points anyway, is that uh, it has good comic relief at points. I mean, there's not much comic relief, but when there is comic relief, you know it's there and it's um, funny at points. And when I was laughing, like people in, in my theater were laughing with me and it was good. And the one last thing I want to say before I go to the bad points is the ending of this movie. Um, because, I was, like I said, I was trying to view it through the eyes of someone who's never read the books. And if I saw the ending, of, I would have been like, oh my god! It was that good. It was like a cliffhanger ending. And it was like in correlation with the book because that's the same way how the book ended. And I thought that the way it was presented um, on the screen was good. The bad points. So even though Catching Fire is phenomenal, there are just little bits that I didn't like about the movie. And one of those bits is um, the pacing. It, even though the pacing is good, I it was at, at some points it felt like it was a little bit too fast paced. Um, there were some parts, I mean, the games overall were good, but there were some parts where it felt like um, there was more to be shown in that part of the games, or more stuff should have been developed a little bit more. One of those things is the ending, and even though, like I said, the ending was good, I thought um, it, it was just a little bit too fast-paced. I mean, in the first hundred games, like, the ending just came like that, but... Yeah, the ending in Catching Fire was better, but it was just still a little bit too fast-paced, in my opinion. Another small bad point was the writing. Even though the writing was fantastic in the movie, I thought that um, some elements of it were bad, like the love triangle. And I think this goes back to the pacing as well, because Katniss, Gale, and Peeta have this love triangle going on. And uh, I was trying to view it, like I said, still, through the eyes of someone who's never read the books. In the end of the movie, I was trying to like figure out like who Katniss was more affectionate towards, and I couldn't like really think of who it was. I mean, I know who it is from the books, but like I said, on the movie, I mean, in the movie, like I didn't really know who it was. Another thing about um, the writing is that it added some stuff in the games that wasn't in the first games, and this isn't spoiling anything. But in the in the first book, um, when someone, uh, when one of the tributes died, like a hovercraft would come into the arena and like a claw would descend on the dead tribute and lift it up and um, the hovercraft would get out of the arena. But in the first movie, they never showed that. I mean, I don't know why they didn't show that. Maybe it was because of um, budget reasons or something. But in the second movie, um, it showed that. And if I never read the books, I would have been confused because I was like, I didn't really see that in the first one. I wonder why there that's happening right now. So what I'm trying to say is like, if it wasn't in the first movie, then don't put it in the second movie. And the final bad point is just a tiny thing, but it's about the score for Catching Fire. And um, the problem with the score, I mean, there's some stuff that's original, but there's some stuff that's reused from the first score, from the first movie, and uh, it annoyed me a little bit. I mean, I understand the capital theme, like, um, yeah, I understand that part since it's the theme of the capital, but there were other um, tracks from the first score that were reused, like, um, they weren't recycled, and by recycled, I mean, like, they had a different tone to it, or a different mood to it. No, they are just reused, like, the same, to the same tone, the same mood, and everything, and I 
found that to be a little bit sloppy and a little bit lazy. I mean, I think they could have um, made something original, in my opinion. So my dad um, thought that the first movie was good, and he gave the first movie a 3.5. But for Catching Flagger, he gives it a 3.75 out of 4 stars. And I give it a 3.75 out of 4 stars as well. I thought that this film was incredible. You need to see it right now. Um, if you haven't seen the first movie, then uh, go see the first movie now, even though you've never read books, because you need to see this movie. Alright, spoilers for Hunger Games Catching Fire. Um, if you if you haven't seen Catch Fire yet, if you haven't um, watched the first movie, then get it out of here now because I'm going to spoil the ending and um, yeah, if you haven't seen it, get it out of here now. The first thing I want to talk about is um, um, District 13 um, being mentioned not that much and um, some people like fans and um, moviegoers may think like, well, what's District 13? And I thought that um, them not really mentioning District, um, District 13 was good because um, it sets up something that you want to know in the next movie. Because if I hadn't read the books, I would have been like, what's this District 13? I want to know in the next movie. And, and uh, that's why I thought it was good because I want you to see the next movie because about District 13. It's like, what's this District 13? Why is it so special? So the ending, like I said, was really good. Um, I thought it was a good way to end the movie. and. It was a um, direct adaptation from the book. Like nothing was nothing was really changed from the book onto the screen. I thought it was a really good um, way to end the movie, even though it was a little bit um, fast paced. Like I said, in the bad points, but overall it was a good movie. Because if I hadn't read the books, I would have been shocked to hear what Gale says to Katniss, like um, or or um. What Hamish says to Candace at first when they're on the hovercraft because when they're on the hovercraft, Hamish tells um Candace that Peta is um captured by the Capitol and the Capitol is holding them up, and I would've been I would've been like whoa what if I hadn't read the books and then when they're in District Thirteen I guess at the end of the movie when Gale says um there's no more District Twelve it's been destroyed I would've been like wait what. And then, and then you saw Katniss's face. Um, Jennifer Lawrence did a really good job in this scene, like in the ending scene, because you see it's a overhead shot, like that's going down on her, and you see like her face is like really sad at first, and then it turns into confusion, and then it turns into like pure rage, and it's like holy crap, this, and then it th and then it ends, and it's like wait, that's it? I want more. I mean, that's the thing I like about the ending because it wants you um to ha it wants you want more so that was my review of the hunger games catching fire it is incredible it is way better than the first movie in my opinion like i said you guys need to see it um if you haven't seen the first movie like i said then go watch it on netflix i think it's on right now or go buy it right now and watch it because you need to see this movie i um promise you you won't be disappointed it's worth the money and that's it